remember this? I do remember this. We used to use this as the theme for Piano Puzzlers way back when. Right. I mean, it started 2002. 2002. May 3rd, 2002 was the very first one, although we didn't call it the Piano Puzzler at that point. There was the keyboard collision, which sounded too violent. Yeah, wrong connotations. And there was musical merger. Not, not bad. I'm not sure what else there were. Piano Puzzler definitely struck a key yeah. or a chord. So, so week two, we went with Piano Puzzler, yeah. and that name has stuck yeah. since 2002. That's right. And this one was almost the theme song. And even now, to me, it still sounds more like the Bach. I have to think, wait a minute, it's not the Bach Goldberg variations, Aria. It's <laughs> like it. It uses some of it, but it's the Streets of Laredo, the folk song. Yeah, and let's unpack this a little bit. Okay. How, how do those two go together to make a piano puzzler? Yeah, well, the original tune of the Bach... So I kept the exact same bass line. I didn't do anything to the entire left hand, and it, I had to find a tune that I could fit in there. And luckily, there are hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I used the Streets of Laredo. Um, I picked it partly because even though it's the wrong first note, it repeats as... So it's as I walked out. And the exact ornaments, you know, the, not every piece has famous ornaments, but the Goldberg Variations aria, this ornament, and also, um, um, and that alone, any pianist would recognize. And that's the idea here, to take a, a, a famous classical piece, or at least the style of a classical composer. Or Someti Baroque. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes quoting a particular piece, yeah. sometimes not. Yeah and create this musical mashup with a popular tune. Yeah. The folk song, kid song, Broadway show tune, melody from pop music, and put them together in a way that creates this kind of musical pun. Yeah, I played one, and what happened? We were gonna make just a one-shot appearance? Yeah, I think we recorded a few yeah. at the beginning, and we thought, well, you know, it'll be like a three-week thing, and that'll be that. Right. And then you called back and said, I got some more. Right. And that was 2002. <laughs> That's right. Now it's not that I have more, but I keep writing them, you know, it's, it, and it's changed. In the beginning, it was, how do I do this? What's the idea? And now I, uh, I have to figure out how else can I do it? Because I've been doing them. Uh, we're coming into, we're in the 11th season. And it's not quite once a week that I have one for 11 years, but almost. Almost. So there are hundreds of these now. Some of the funniest puzzlers or the most interesting have come from hearing something that I can't help it. It reminds me of something completely unrelated to it. Do you have an example that comes to mind? Actually, this Goldberg Variations is one. Oh. But here's another one very, very early on. about that is the real the Chopin starts like this and it occurred to me if the C was sharp which sounds so wrong then you could go into <laughs> which is what it is so the right hand turns out to be in major you know and the left hand's minor and mostly using Chopin's harmonies So right there, I wrote at the top of this without wincing as a, <laughs> as a marking. Because <laughs> if you know the Chopin, yeah. it's just so wrong. Right. But um, the, the things that connect, they're endless. Everything starts to sound like everything else. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, sounds like the Torador song, but it's also Rudolph the Red Nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And once your ear gets in that pattern... Okay. 
you start to hear connections all over the place. Uh, Western music only has 12 pitches. Yeah, yeah. And the limited, there, there is a huge infinite way of combining them, but that also includes rhythm and octaves and harmony. And yeah. So if you take some of that out, just the tunes alone, there are bound to be repetitions. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like is when you signal to me that you get it because you always say something to the listener like, I'm picturing someone with a pipe. Or <laughs> all of a sudden I realized that this person got up at five o'clock in the morning perhaps to drink, you know, a big uh, dark coffee. Uh, Brahms. Uh, yeah, Brahms, right. <laughs> you know, so you, you often say, I'm just, something about it's making me think of a cowboy hat. And then I know uh, that you got it. Although sometimes I'm wrong too. That, Not that often. But it, it can happen. But that's good. That's encouraging for the listeners. And right? it truly, it it really is spontaneous. Yes, you know? right. it, it really happens the way it happens. Yeah. So. For me, I have to say, I, I find it very hard to imagine what it's like to hear these because I worked so hard on them. But also sometimes I forget myself what I did you know, while I'm playing mm -hmm. them because I do so many of them. And the, the funniest thing is if something really, really sounds like a famous piano piece, let's say of Chopin, Brahms, or Debussy, and then there's something wrong with it because it's a different tune, I sometimes, while I'm playing them, think, wait a minute, what is going on here again? <laughs> and I have to look at the title, say, oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so that, in a big nutshell, yeah. is the story of the piano puzzlers and right. how they came to be and where they are now. And who knows how long this will keep going. It's impossible to know. We, we do them on the radio every week, but we also do them sometimes in concert here yes. and there across the country and around the world. So it's become a thing, the piano puzzler. That's right. I'm so glad that you do this for us every week. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Fred. <laughs>